I'm Linda Watson. I went to NC State graduating in 1979. My degree is in writing and editing. It's an English degree. I am the cook for good lady. It's a thrilling job. I develop recipes, write cookbooks, I teach cooking classes, do videos, I design t-shirts, I do everything and I use my communication skills to make it all happen. When I graduated from NC State, my first job was as a procedures writer for what was then Carolina Power and Light and is now Progress Energy. It was a terrific job because I learned how to do everything that needed to be done in a huge company. So that was a great experience that also helped me learn how to do procedures analysis, budgeting and scheduling, which has really come into handy. Linda went to work for the Institute for Defense Analyses, then IBM. Then she worked for the Virtus Corporation, a computer gaming company. She then founded her own company, eGarden.com. Linda sold eGarden, then retired. She worked in politics, then worked for the Raleigh Independent Business Alliance. And finally have now become the cook for good lady, which puts all those skills together and is just more fun than any of those other jobs all put together. I think that the key advantage that someone with a degree in communications has in any sort of technical industry is you can understand what the technology is and you can communicate it to other people. So I was able to be the liaison between my technical team, the managers, and other businesses. So I started reading about two different trends. One, Michael Pollan was saying to people, whatever you do, whatever you do, whatever you do, stay out of the center of the store. Stay outside where the food rots. Make sure that you don't go inside where I know that the dried beans are, the rice, the flour, all the inexpensive and healthy food. So I thought, Michael Pollan, food doesn't need to be expensive. It can be inexpensive. And at the same time, a lot of anti-hunger activists were working on bringing awareness to the fact that the food stamp allowance had not risen in nine years. So they asked people to go on what they called the food stamp challenge. The idea was that everyone would eat on one dollar a meal per person, which was the average amount that was available for the food stamps at that time. And they would see how hard it was. And it was hard. But it wasn't as hard as some of the activists were painting it. And I got torn between listening to them say, you know, it's really hard, and I agree that we needed to raise the food stamp allowance. On the other hand, you can cook nutritious and healthy food for not much money. So I thought, let's see what happens. Let's put together the food stamp challenge and challenge Michael Pollan's idea that you shouldn't go inside the store, add my procedures analysis, and then see what happens when a good cook tries to show how easy it is. It's still not easy, but it can be figured out, and that's what my book, Wildly Affordable Organic, is all about. So part of what I do with Cook for Good, my classes and my presentations at farmers markets, food banks, and various organizations where people are interested in health, is I help them see how easy it is to cook like it matters. For example, I like to use really visual examples. One pound of dried beans costs as much as one can of canned beans, but it makes four cans worth of beans. So if you want to cut your grocery bill by 75% in this one instance, what you'll do is you'll cook from dried beans. When people see this, they understand it, and that's part of the communication skills that is so important to my job and to making a difference in the world. I worked with Carolyn Miller, Dr. Carolyn Miller, who teaches rhetoric and technical writing in the English department. She was my undergraduate advisor, so she helped me go all the way through my undergraduate years and also taught me rhetoric at the graduate level when I went back to take my computer science degree. So she was fantastic at that, and I actually learned ideas that I'm still using today. So. I am eternally grateful to her, and she has remained my friend to this day. So we are still in touch, and she's just been fantastic. I'm the first person in my family to graduate from college, and I worked my way through school. It was a very wonderful experience. I'm so glad that I did. It gave me a chance to really understand how valuable that education is, and I think I approached the degree 
with more maturity and more of a desire to make sure that I got my value out of it. So it was terrific to work my way through school and it gave me a chance to work for organizations like the NC State Technician. At that time, I was working at the Technician as the entertainment reporter. I got to go write reviews about Ella Fitzgerald. I got to interview um, Frank Capra, the great film director. My first interview was with Frank Capra. He gave me an hour at the DHL library, which is worth a whole semester's tuition all by itself. I also took a lot of other courses in environmental science and other topics that are hot now, help me with my business now, but it was just an interest to me at the time. I was interested in living with a small footprint on the world and NC State helped me see how to do that.